parallelogram law of vector addition. This is one more way to add vectors. We have already studied the triangle law. In this method, we connect the tail of two vectors we want to add. Instead of drawing a triangle connecting head of one with the tail of another. Let us say there are two vectors A vector and B vector we want to add. We will connect the tail of the two vectors. Now we will draw a parallelogram by drawing two sides parallel to A and B. The sum of A and B will be represented by the diagonal connecting A and B. We draw the diagonal from the tail of A and B and call it vector C. As can be seen, the diagonal has different length and direction than those of vector A and B and it is a different vector. We call this diagonal C vector to be equal to A vector plus B vector. Now let us look at the proof of the parallelogram law. It can very easily be proved from the triangle law. A diagonal divides a parallelogram in two equal triangles. If we look at any of the triangles, say the lower one, in it C is clearly equal to A plus B from the triangle law. Note that the sum of two vectors will always lie between two vectors in terms of direction. Here direction of C will lie between the direction of A and B. Thus the resultant C will always lie between A and B if we connect A and B by tails. Also note that the diagonal need not be necessarily greater in magnitude than the sides of For example, in this case, when angle between A and B is small, the diagonal is bigger in magnitude than the magnitude of both A and B. Thus, C, the resultant, is greater in magnitude than A vector and is greater in magnitude than B vector. But in this case, when the angle between A and B is large, the diagonal is smaller in magnitude than the magnitude of both A and B. Thus, C is smaller in magnitude than the magnitude of A and C is smaller in magnitude than the magnitude of B. We will discuss some examples where we will use the parallelogram law for adding two vectors. In the first example, two forces each of 20 Newton are acting on a body. What will be the net force acting on the body? How will we find the net force? We will connect the tails of two forces, make a parallelogram and find the diagonal. The red color indicates the diagonal and will be the sum of the two forces. In the second example, a block is kept on an inclined plane. Two forces, mg and normal reaction, are acting on the block. What will be the net force on the block? We have to follow the same steps. Draw a parallelogram and find the diagonal. The diagonal will be in the direction of net force. In the third example, a body is moving in a circular path, is said to have two accelerations, one towards the center called a centripetal acceleration and the another is tangential called as tangential acceleration. What will be the total acceleration of the body? Again we have to find the diagonal of the parallelogram formed by the two accelerations. The net acceleration will be towards the diagonal.